The Tao of Self-Confidence, Episode 118. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of courageous women finding their inner journey to self-confidence five days a week. Want to learn how you can change your inner beliefs and attitudes? Download a free copy of the ebook by visiting the Tao of Self-Confidence.com. Well, hello, friend. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yap Chan, and today I have a lovely lady who's all the way from Norway. Um, she is a she also has a successful podcast, which is called Today's Leading Women. Um, you know, she's interviewed more than 500 female entrepreneurs on her podcast, so you know it's amazing to have her on on the show today and share her story of self-confidence. I'm going to introduce you to Marie Graceberg. Marie, how are you doing today? Maybe you can fill in a little bit more about yourself to our listeners. I am doing awesome, Sheena. Thank you so much for inviting me to your podcast. I love the topic that you have. I'm so honored to be here. Yes, so not too long ago, I uh, moved to Norway. I was living in the U.S. for many years, but um, I was finding it hard to be away with my husband. So I decided to move to Norway. So now we're living in both countries, Norway and the U.S., traveling here and there. Uh, But at the moment, I'm in Norway. And that's the beauty of having a business that you can operate wherever you are. Because right now I'm in Norway. I'm able to build my business. And podcasting has really build that platform for me. So I'm happy to be sharing, especially how pod, uh, self-confidence relate to how I was able to start a my own podcast. Awesome. I can't wait to hear the story. So Marie, what's, what's your cultural background? So I am influenced by three different cultures. I grew up in the Philippines. You know, Philip, growing up in the Philippines, I didn't know about self-confidence and it was never taught, especially where I grew where in my family or where I grew up. And then I moved to the U.S. where I lived for many years where self-confidence is like expected of year. And now in Norway, it's a must. I feel like it's a must to be self-confident. Otherwise, you're not going anywhere. So I believe my self-confidence now is being influenced or... Uh, k- kind of, yeah, I mean, from those different cultures that I have uh, experienced, that I have lived, I think that helped me build my confidence in, in not just my personal life, but in my career, in my business, and in my daily, day-to-day life and in general. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And I totally understand when you said you, you grew up in the Philippines, because that's where I was born as well. So... <laughs> You know, oh, it's, that is nice to hear that. I mean, I, I'm sure you share, I'm not sure if you had the same experience as I had, but growing up in my family, it was never being, I was never taught about self-confidence. I never heard about that word either. But I think, uh, I mean, in reflecting now, I felt like it's expected of you in some ways, like because I was sent to college alone and I have to find my way. <laughs> I have to be confident about being alone and going to college myself, doing what is expected of you. So I think you'll learn it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you just learn it along the way, right? We figure things out. So, you know, thanks for sharing that. And, you know, Marie, what's your favorite self-confidence quote? I love this question. So to me, self-confidence is a choice. And... I live by this because I believe you can choose to be confident. I, and, and I am a true testimonial of this because I'll give you an example. You know, when I moved to Norway for the first time, I knew no one except my husband. And I needed to be confident about myself so that I can reach out and get to know people. Otherwise, I'm just going to be staying home. So I decided, okay, I need to ha- I need to find that courage inside me. I need to have that confidence so I can go out and meet other people. Not only that, but I need to have that confidence inside me to be able to follow what it is that I want to do. Otherwise, wow, I'm just going to be miserable. So to me, self-confidence is a choice. And I know um, we're going to talk more about self-confidence. But for me, that was the deciding point. That was the, that was how self-confidence to me is. You have to make that choice. You have to make that decision that you can become, you can be self-confident. You can be confident about what you, about yourself, about what you do, about the people around you, about the things around you. You can be confident if you choose to. And I know it's a bold statement, but I believe it is a choice and you have that choice. Everyone has that choice. I totally agree. And, you know, being self-confident, you have to be bold. So, you know, I totally love it. (laughs) People forget that self-confidence is something with inside you and something you can choose to have and choose to get. So thank you for sharing that. And in your own words, how would you define self-confidence? 
I have been contemplating about this because, okay, based based on my own experience, and my favorite one is self-confidence to me is being comfortable, being uncomfortable. And I know this is a cliche, but you know what? Self-confidence really is having the courage to put yourself out there, to forget about you, but be of service to others. Because if you, if you are in the, if you come from that service to others, you, you forget yourself that, okay, I'm doing this not for myself, but for other people. That is, that's how I really hone my, my self-confidence in myself because I, for, I, I said, okay, this is not about me. This is about people that I serve. So if you look at it in that perspective, you feel like, okay, this is very uncomfortable for me, but because I want to serve the people that I want to serve, I have to be confident. I have to be comfortable. I have to try to be comfortable being uncomfortable. And I know this has been said. I've heard this too from a lot of people, but it's really true because that's how I feel. I mean, going out in public, for example, speaking or doing my podcast, interviewing hundreds of women entrepreneurs that, you know, I, you know, I didn't have any relationship or I didn't know from before. You know, you have to have that confidence. You have to be comfortable in being in that situation. So being comfortable, being uncomfortable, I think that's my definition of success. And it has served me, although it's, it's like a continuing process for me. Uh, it's always, I mean, public speaking, for example, it's not going to be, I will never be all comfortable about it because I'm always scared. But when you get there, when you forget yourself, but be of service to others, knowing that, okay, I'm doing this for them, then it builds my courage, it builds my confidence. I am being able to get out there without preservation on myself. I love the definition that you have because, you know, being confident, you do have to do things that are going to be uncomfortable. Like, like, you know, like you said, public speaking. I mean, when I first started the podcast, I was nervous as hell, <laughs> you know, but, you know, the more we do it, the easier it gets. So, you know, thank you for sharing that definition. It's a great one. And Marie, what was your life like before your discovery of self-confidence? Right. So before, I mean, okay, I've always uh, considered myself introvert, although my friends would say I am very social and outgoing. I guess because when we are on parties, for example, or in social gathering, you know, I'm not the person who's going to start the conversation first. But if somebody starts the conversation, wow, I am out there. <laughs> so I'm not a good initiator, as they said. But when, but then I realized that, wow, I, if I'm going to party um, every time and I'm just going to be sitting there waiting for somebody to talk to me, it's going to be a lonely, long night. So like what I said earlier, I made a choice that, okay, I have to train myself. I have to be comfortable being uncomfortable or reaching out to people. And that's just one example. But what really helped me is knowing, learning that Self-confidence really comes from being competent. And I learned this from uh, Brendan Burchard of High Performance Academy, where he said, competence leads to confidence. And I can truly attest to this because when I'm confident about something, I am, you know, I mean, when I'm confident about something, I am confident in putting myself out there. So let me give you an example. For example, earlier, I mean, I never, I've never been a good dancer. And it's so, it's a pity because I'm, I think I'm the only Asian who doesn't know how to dance and people don't believe me. But I really do. I didn't, I don't know how to dance. So one day I said, okay, let me make this decision um, to do a dance lessons. So I went to dance lessons, dance classes and learn how to dance. My favorite dance now is salsa, and I love it. It really opened that uh, possibility for me, the opportunity for me to mingle with other people, and it's fun. So it's really about, I mean, if I wasn't confident about it, I mean, if I didn't know a few some steps about dancing or salsa, for example, for that matter, I wouldn't be confident about going into parties, going to other to, to gatherings, or even reaching out to other people. So I think it has something to do with being confident as well, uh, that leads to your having that confidence on yourself. I love it. And don't feel bad. You're not the only Asian who can't dance. <laughs> <laughs> I, can that. I can sing either. <laughs> and I totally agree with you on that because like for me, I do the show five days a week, right? So, you know, I just could keep on doing it and doing it and doing it. It gives me more confidence to be on the mic and talk to people and get people to interview and, and just, you know, producing the show, right? If I didn't have that you know, if I wasn't competent enough to do that or, you know, be able to, to do these things, then I wouldn't be here today. So, you know, I really love what you shared. And, you know, after that realization, what's your life like right now? 
Oh, wow. I mean, I, I have to put it uh, as a top of my awareness that, wow, being, when I'm in a situation where I, feel, I don't feel confident, I, you know, first of all, I said to myself, okay, self-confidence is a choice. Do I know something about this topic or do I know something about this thing that I am I'm feeling not confident about so I kind of do some reflection on myself first and say okay what's why am I feeling this way and then I make that decision at that moment that okay I have this choice to be confident either I will step back out or I will move forward and if I choose to move forward even though it feels uncomfortable in the beginning I later you know I later realized that wow it wasn't really you know, that bad, you know, putting yourself out there, you know, when, once you are there in that situation and you choose to be confident about it, you choose to forget uh, that what you are there is for other people, then I have that courage. I find that courage within me to put myself out there. So, I mean, I, I couldn't right now. I mean, I, of course, podcasting, I mean, meeting a lot of people, that really helped me. But at the same time, more and more, the more, the more I feel confident about things or topics or environment or surroundings or gatherings, the more opportunities open up, the more people come to you, the more opportunities come to you. So I feel like self-confidence or having that confidence builds uh, a lot more opportunities, opens up more opportunities to you. It feels like you are more open because you don't have that... Uh, the limitations on yourself. You are open to what it is that, that comes to you and not being limited by the fact that you feel you don't feel confident or you don't feel like you deserve this or you don't feel like you're comfortable doing this. So it definitely opened up more opportunities and more people around me. I love it. You know, it's great that, you know, you, you can do that. You're aware of what you do and you just make the decision, right? It, all it takes is a decision and just take action on it. And, you know, then you're, you're out there, right? Whether it's your show, whether you're doing public speaking, you know, you're just, you're just out there having more opportunities, having more fun and meeting new people. So, um, Marie, if our listeners, you know, they're more, they're, they're listening to your episode and they're really inspired if, to take, you know, self-confidence in their journey, what would be that one tip you would give to them? First, decide and choose to be confident, whatever that means to you. And then learn as much as you can about certain topics or things that interest you. Because like what I've said earlier, competence builds your confidence, which will naturally help you open up to like up more opportunities, more people around you. So if it helps, I mean, for me, it really helps being competent, whatever that one is to you. Be confident about it because that be breeds that confidence in you. You will feel more confident about yourself. You will feel more confident putting yourself out there because you're confident about things, about topics, or things you're passionate about. You know that people are interested with as well. So decide and then choose to be confident and then build that confidence because that confidence equates to being self-confident. I love it. Thanks for that tip. You know, it's one thing to make a decision and then it's another thing to act on it, right? I mean, absolutely. It's great to make decisions, but if you don't act on it, it's still a decision. So thank you for sharing that. And Marie, if our listeners want to get to know a little bit more about you and what you do, is there any links or social media profiles we can connect with? Yeah, I'd love to invite your listeners to uh, listen to inspirational journeys of uh, women from around the globe that are being shared on my podcast. And you can learn more about it at www.todaysleadingwomen.com. I do podcasts. I do interview women entrepreneurs all over the world seven days a week. So again, the link is www.todaysleadingwomen.com. Listen, come listen to their journeys and be inspired just like them. Awesome. I love it. I love when there's, you know, women out there podcasting and sharing more women's success stories. I just believe that the more we have it, the more we can uplift other women up. So thank you for sharing that. And to our listeners, if you want to connect with Marie and listen to her podcast, you can also head on over to the Tao of selfconfidence.com and search for Marie's name. Her show notes will pop up along with everything else we talked about. And I really want to thank Marie, you know, for taking the time to share her story with us. So thank you so much. You're very welcome. And thank you to you. It's been an honor. Awesome. And to our listeners, be on the lookout for another new episode of another amazing woman's journey to self-confidence. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Thank you for joining us on another episode of the Tao of Self-Confidence. Visit the Tao of Self-Confidence.com for links to everything we chatted about today, as well as killer resources, gifts, and so much more. 
subscribe to the Tao Self Confidence on iTunes or Stitcher to hear more stories of amazing women finding their inner journey to self-confidence.